Let's take a look at the features of Vertolith by Muto. Vertolith is a 64-bit RIP, so you can count on fast startup times. The unique dashboard uh, communicates in a bi-directional with your printer, so you'll always know the status of your printer. For instance, in this case, we can see on printer number one that the white ink is empty. You can see up to four different printers and the status of each one. All you have to do is go to your printer and exchange the white in this case, or whatever ink cartridge is needed. And when you get back to the dashboard, it's updated, so you know exactly the status of your inks in each of your printers. In addition to that, you can look at all of the printer menus that have been set for your particular device. So this keeps you up to date on exactly what your settings are for each printer. If I click on all printers over here, you can actually modify and see exactly what the status is of all jobs for every printer. You can add jobs to Vertolith with your favorite design software or directly just using Add Jobs. Simply pick a print environment or a workflow, pick the file you want to print, and it's easily added. Double click or click on the Edit menu to edit all the job settings for that particular file. You can edit things through an easy to use tab system. Things like layout, profiles, layering, all within the same easy to use workflow. In this case, we're gonna pick a particular print environment, a particular uh, ICC profile, for instance. We're gonna lay it out. We're gonna change the size, the position, the orientation. You can change things like copies and so forth with a very easy to use menu. And you're seeing updates in real time. Once you have the file prepared, simply go to Submit to Print and your file will begin printing. Printing white and varnish layers with Vertolith could not be easier. In this case, what I'm going to do is pick an image and we're going to lay it out. Very simple. And once that image is laid out, we'll simply go to Printer Profile and we'll choose white printing. There are a number of different methods. And once you apply this, you'll actually see horizontal lines which indicate where the white is going to appear. We're simply printing or choosing the method that we're going to use. And we can even preview it by turning off the color portion and looking at just what the white is going to do. Once everything is set up correctly, all we need to do next is send the file. It's really just that easy. Okay, let's talk about uh, printing varnish and white with the CMYK in between. So we're going to lay down a white layer, uh, put the CMYK on top of it, and then add varnish on top of that. In this case, what I've done is I've created three different uh, projects of the same image. So one is a silhouette, and, and one is the varnish layer, and one is a CMYK layer. And I'm going to nest these together. And that's really nice because once you nest things together, in this case, we can actually use a technique for separating those into layers and then choosing how each layer is printed. So first what we'll do is we'll resize the image like we've done before. And this time we'll go to the print printer profile. And as you can see, we have layer arrangements. We can actually move these layers around in the order that we want them to print. So if I need to, I'm going to say, okay, here's my white layer. I'm going to define that for that particular layer that you're seeing there, the bottom layer. 
and then we'll define how we want that to print. Next, we'll go to our varnish layer and we'll say, hey, that needs to be uh, actually on top of everything, so let's move it up one. You see how easy that is to do. All right, so we'll check the order. There's all three layers. Top layer is varnish, middle layer is the CMYK, bottom layer is white. So we'll go down to our varnish layer here and pick a method for printing. And what's really cool is we can actually click an advanced tab and open up our driver settings so that we can use our uh, unique local dimming control if we want to. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, require that the uh, varnish be printed as glossy. So we're just changing some of the driver options for that. Okay. Now, once we have that done, uh, we can actually uh, check the order, or if we need to, just send that file and have it start printing. Bertolith also allows you to create, import, jigs right within the software. Let's make one just so you can see how it's actually done. First, we're going to go to create a jig and we're going to give it a name. Immediately you see a layout. We can now set the size of these squares, the columns, the spacing between them, the margins, everything we need to do and we actually see real-time updates right on the screen. We also have real-time help. You can literally click on help and see what some of the options are as you're creating the jig. Once done, you simply save it and we can actually turn on an option to print that jig with varnish ink if you wish. So in other words, we can place a piece of material right on the printer and print, uh, in this case, we'll choose rectangles. There's a number of different patterns and we can send that right to our printer and have it print this pattern out so that we know exactly where to lay our printed material that we're about to use. As you can see here, it's actually printing those rectangles for us right on top of the media that we're going to be using as the jig for our final print. All right, once that's done, let's open a file that we want to actually print. Again, easy to use editing. We're simply going to lay it out. And in this case, we're going to go to Jig Layout and choose Enable Jig Layout. We'll choose the jig we just created. And you can see it update immediately. You can literally click on different uh, parts of the jig to turn them on or off or to activate or deactivate them. So in this case, we're going to do five prints. And as you notice, I'm just simply using make more copies and it's skipping that one right in the middle, but you can still turn it on or off. It's up to you. It's possible to actually change the layout of each individual piece or all of them at once. And in this case, we simply centered it right on the jig or in the jig template for each copy. Once we've got it right, we simply send it to print. We want to print these multiples. It's actually sending the job right now. It's going to take exactly what you see down there on the bottom and send that right to my template and my jig that I have on my printer. And here we go. You can see the jig layout. You see the prints actually printing. I've already put the media right on top where it belongs. It's only doing the five, which is all I needed in this case. 
And once that's done, we have our finished product. As I mentioned earlier, Vertolith allows you to control multiple printers right from the rip, up to four different printers. Simply pick the printer you want to control, pick an image that you want to print for that printer, and then choose Edit and change the workflow in any fashion that you want. In this case, remember, we benefit from this bi-directional communication with our printer, so we can actually poll the size and make sure our media is correct when we're previewing on the screen. That helps us with layout when we're fitting uh, large pieces or when we're trying to make sure everything is correct size-wise. There are color correction tools for color management, things like RGB adjustments, ink control, spot color replacement. We can also enable crop marks and even choose the size of the crop mark. If a job requires grommets, simply turn on our grommet indicator. Turn on where you want those grommets to be placed, how many, the size, and if they're difficult to see, you can even fill them in with color and choose anything to use for your color. There's also a tiling feature that we can use with Vertolith. So if an image is much larger, we can enable tiling and actually see the tile as well as the overlap and set those accordingly. We can use uniform tiling or we can even offset the tiles. We can turn them on and off easily by simply checking or unchecking a marker. If you want, you can take an image that's large like this one and actually trim or clip it. Just drag and drop. Choose the area you want to trim to and print just that area if you wish. Again, you can change the size and all kinds of things using the Layout tab. Let's add a different job into my uh, print environment. This is actually a very small tile that's actually a seamless tile. And let's change the size of that tile a bit, make it a little bit smaller. And let's go to step and repeat and turn that on. Because if we have a seamless tile, turning that on creates a very interesting pattern. Now here we've made copies of this image and it's a uniform fit. But we can also offset these tiles, change the size of them, and handle many different aspects of creating some very interesting artwork. This is great for wallpaper design or other reasons. It couldn't get much simpler than this. Let's also go to printer notes. If you have a job that you're printing and you want to actually add some notes to it, you can do so. So for instance, here's a job that we're going to print and we simply want to make note of, actually print on the media itself, things like the job name, the printer name, the profile we use, color management settings, and much more. Even custom comments. The last tab in your print environment and workflow is called Summary. 
It's a really quick way to see all the settings that you've made in the tabs above. This will keep you right on track and give you some idea of what you might need to change if necessary. Once we've got that job set up, we can send it to our printer. We simply set up that media, go to our Vertilith, we submit the job, and it will rip and print right to the printer. A very easy workflow. It doesn't get much better than Vertilith from Muto.